So in the tutorial, we went over some of the basics of rendering in Cinema 4D, like the picture viewer and the render view. Now we're going to dive a bit deeper and learn how to set up a basic render utilizing ambient occlusion and global illumination. So I have a very basic scene here using the asset from the particle effect tutorial, which you can find in the description below. We're going to use this to set up a very quick and easy render. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is kind of change the effect going on here. So if we go up here to poly effects, you can see that we can scrub this back and forth and either hide the text or make it completely visible. You can see that the particles are kind of forming it together. And I'm just going to go kind of toward the end here, right about where that S is forming, kind of just move it back a little bit to get some nice particles. Okay, that's looking good. So now what we want to do is first drop in a floor. So if we go up here to create, environment, floor. And we kind of just position this over our text here. And now if we run a quick render, let's see how this is looking. So go up here to render view and we can select that. And that is going to render directly in our viewport here. So we can see this is how our render is currently looking. It's not really looking that great. So we're going to need to adjust some different settings to get it looking how we want. But if we select directly in our viewport here, you can see that the render goes away and now we're manipulating regularly as we would in the 3D viewport. Okay, so next what we wanna do is go to our render settings and enable some effects. So if we select our render settings, it's gonna open up the render settings window here. If we go to effect, let's go down to ambient occlusion. So now if we run another render, we can see kind of the effect that is having on it. So now we're getting deeper shadows and the text is just standing out a little bit better. So next what we wanna do is apply some materials to our objects here because right now there are no materials applied to them. So what we wanna do is select our Digital Tutors text here, and go down here to create. And I'm just gonna snap this off so you can see it a little bit better. And we can go down here to Load Material Preset. And Cinema 4D comes with a lot of really good materials that you can use. So we're going to select that, go to Broadcast, Resources, Materials, and we can see we have quite a few different options here. We have Glossy, Matte. We're going to go to Glossy and just scroll down here until you find the plastic materials. You can see right here. And I'm just going to change this to Orange. And if we right click our material with our Digital Tutors text selected, we can go to apply and that's gonna apply our material to this text here. And if we double click the material, we can see we can adjust some of the various attributes for it. And I'm just gonna double click this color here and I'm just gonna change it to something a little bit brighter. Something about like that should work. See that kind of just brightens up that orange color. And now we want to apply a material to our floor. So if we go here to create again, which we already have the, the dialog box open up here, and we can go to load material preset again, go to broadcast, resources, materials, glossy, and we're going to apply another plastic material to this. And this time it's just going to be the plastic glossy. And if we select our floor here, we can right click the material just select apply, which it might be kind of hidden on the view there, but it's just right under the edit there. All right, now let's run another quick test render directly in our viewport here. All right, great. So that kind of livens things up. It makes it a little bit brighter with that floor color. And now our text really pops with that orange. So now what we want to do is apply global illumination to our render here. So we can go up here to render settings, effect, and go down here till you find global illumination and just select that and that will apply it to our renderer here. And next we wanna apply a sky to our render. So if we go up here to create, environment, sky. So now if we run another quick test render, let's just see how this is looking. All right, so now we have the global illumination in our scene, and this is what the render currently looks like. But now we want to add a light, because right now the global illumination is acting on the sky we just dropped in. 
if we didn't have the sky and we had global illumination, everything would be pretty much completely black in our render. So we're going to go up here to create light, and we're going to drop in an area light. And we're just going to move this up, kind of just rotate it downward toward our text there. Again, kind of just move it into place here. Oops. All right. And now let's run another render and see what this light source does to our scene here. All right, so this is what the render looks like with the light source in there. So it's now looking really good. So what we want to actually do is enable the light source to have shadows. So if we go back into our scene here and select the light source, and we can go down here to our panel for our light source, the various options we have. We can make sure we have shadow selected. We're going to change this from shadow type none to area. And we're going to bump up the accuracy just a little bit to 100%. And the minimum samples, let's just bump that up to something like 12, just to make our shadows a little bit crisper. So now let's run a quick render and see how this is looking. All right, so with those shadows enabled, our render is really coming together. And you can see that the global illumination is working here. We're kind of getting this orange color bleeding into the background there. It's just really looking nice. So the last thing I want to go over, which we talked about in the article a little bit, is the render settings. So if you wanted to have some type of animation for this, say if you want to animate this poly effects and the text kind of forming into our scene here, you could obviously keyframe that. But if you wanted to render out an image sequence, you would go to your render settings up here. And we have the output. And you can change this. We see we have from and to. So that would be the start frame and basically the end frame. So you could start this, say, on frame 1 to frame 30. So you can change the destination of where you want these image sequences to save to by going to our renderer here and selecting save. And we can see we go to file here. We can just choose the destination where we want to save these to. You can also change the file format. And if you wanted to, you could even save this out as an AVI or QuickTime movie. But again, it's always best to render out an image sequence because if you if your render say fails at frame 99 out of 100, you'll still have 99 frames completely rendered and you'll only have to render one frame. If you render an, a movie file like that, it might fail at frame 99, and you're going to have to re-render the entire scene again. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, great. In this tutorial, we went over some of the basics of rendering in Cinema 4D and how to get decent results in a short amount of time. So be sure to check back to the Digital Tutors blog for more free tutorials.